coloring tips for polyurethane resins, polyurethane elastomers, and of course polyurethane foams. In this video, I'll be covering the basic do's and don'ts for coloring polyurethanes using both pigments and dyes, and of course, the differences between the two. Being able to accurately and consistently color polyurethane parts is an important part of any production casting, be it for product development or prototyping in general, or for restoration work or medical simulators. Now, two terms you want to be aware of when you're coloring polyurethane is intrinsic versus extrinsic color. Now, intrinsic color is what we'll be doing in this video. That's any time we're incorporating the color into the chemistry of the material we're using for casting. Now, extrinsic color is when we're using another material to paint on top of the existing casting. So everything in this video will be intrinsic coloring. Now, some important tips before you get started casting and coloring. Remember that dyes in this context are typically translucent colors, whereas pigments are typically opaque colors. Now this next one is really important. You don't want to exceed more than one to 2% of the total weight in pigment or dye. Anything over four to 5% will start to change the physical properties of the material that you're coloring. Now in instances where you have to create consistently colored parts across an entire batch, where you have to make multiples that need to be exactly the same color, it's helpful to pre-pigment your part B first. But you always want to pre-pigment the part B and not the part A. Now the part A in this series is the ISO, whereas the part B is the poly. And part A is more sensitive to moisture contamination. So if you're pre-pigmenting a gallon kit or a five gallon kit for consistent batch color, it's a good idea to pigment the part B and not the part A. Last but not least, only use compatible pigments or dyes. Acrylic paint and food coloring will cause cure issues with polyurethane materials. Also, some colors may shift over time if they're not compatible. Now for this video, I'll be coloring some different batches of FP40 fast setting flexible polyurethane. This is a polyurethane that's typically used for product development applications. And also we have some customers that use this for like little scale model tires and restoration projects. FP40 has an easy 1A to 2B mix ratio by weight and about a four to four and a half minute working time and about a 50 to 90 minute demold time at room temperature. And the FP, by the way, stands for fast production. This cures to about a 40 shore A, so medium softness with a relatively low viscosity. Now it's also important that FP40 cures a natural amber color, kind of a translucent amber, and that makes it ideal for color matching. Now this first batch we're gonna mix up without any color so you can see what it looks like just in its natural state. And you see me shaking up the part B there. Anytime the label says shake or stir, you want to do just that. And again, this mixes 2B to 1A by weight. Now it's a good idea anytime you're dispensing your part A to wipe down those threads before you put the cap on and that will prevent that from gluing that cap on to that part A. So important little shop tip there. Now you'll notice I'm using a stainless steel spatula here for mixing, and that's really important because a stainless steel spatula doesn't risk contaminating the material with moisture. When you're using a wooden stir stick, sometimes that can absorb moisture out of the air and transfer it to your material. Now once we wipe off our steel spatula, we're ready to cast our part. And again, this is just plain FP40 with no color. And this has a nice neutral amber color to it by itself. So it's important to know what your material looks like before you add color, because just remember some materials that are opaque or cure white or black, you will have to adjust for that color that's intrinsic to the part. Now the two ways we can color this system are with the 68 or 6900 pigments, the 6900 of course being the phthalate free. And those of course, those pigments are opaque or the 7400 dyes, which are translucent. Now I just put a few of the different colors on the screen there for reference, but both the pigments and the dyes come in a wide range of colors. And of course those can be mixed to create even more custom colors. And it's always a good idea to have a color wheel on hand to help you mix and match colors and create custom color formulations. Now for this next batch, we're going to pre-measure out our part B 
and then I'm going to mix my pigment into the part B. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can do that once we dial in a specific color and we know exactly how much we're adding to each batch. We can extrapolate that out across an entire gallon or even a five gallon kit and pre-add that color to that part B. Now here I'm mixing it just with the part B and that allows me to adjust the color if necessary before I add the part A. Remember that as soon as you add your part A, that starts your working time. So real important to get your color dialed in with just the part B first before you start adding your part A. Now, once you're more familiar with the material, you can mix up your A and B and then add color. But if you're starting out with this and you're trying to get very specific colors, it's a good idea to just work with the B first, get in your exact color that you want, and then add your part A. And now ready to pour it into our silicone mold. This is a TC5110 soft silicone mold of a stock ear that I have here at my workshop. And with that four to four and a half minute working time on a lot of smaller parts, you have ample time, if necessary, to even do pressure casting on a part like this. Now this is a simple part and the viscosity is such, I didn't need to do that. But there you see, there's our finished ear. This is about a little over an hour later. And now we're going to do it with the red pigment. Now this time I've gone ahead and mixed up my A and B together. And now I'm adding the red pigment. This is the cherry red from BJB. And again, I'm using a stainless steel spatula to mix that up. So first of all, I can reuse that mixing implement. And then second of all, I don't risk mixing in any kind of ambient moisture by way of a wooden stir stick. And now we're ready to pour that mixture into our silicone mold. And remember, we're working at room temperature, so about 70 to 75 degrees. And that way we get that relatively fast turnaround time of an hour to an hour and a half. So here is our ear part with the cherry red pigment. And you can see that's a very opaque color. Now there are certain applications where you might want a translucent color where you get a little bit of light passing through, especially if you're casting clear resins like simulating tail light lenses and things like that. And that's where we're going to use the dyes. So here I'm mixing in a little bit of red dye. And the dyes, it just takes a few drops to get the color you want. So sometimes you have to measure that in terms of drops rather than grams. Where the pigment, typically you would use grams to gauge how much you're adding. The dyes are so concentrated, just a few drops is plenty. So keeping track of the number of drops you add to a batch can be really helpful. And then of course you can extrapolate that out to pre-pigment an entire gallon just using a specific amount of drops added to that part B. Now here are our finished parts. Here is the FP40 with no pigment. You see that natural color. Now here is our part with the red dye. And you notice we have a translucent part that has light going through it. And then the cherry red opaque pigment that gives us a very opaque red and then of course our flesh tone now the pigments and dyes can be used to achieve a wide range of internal colors but if you do need to do extrinsic work or painting work you can paint cast flexible polyurethane parts using sc89 and sc89 thinner this is a clear polyurethane paint base that can be pigmented with the 6800 pigments or the 7400 dyes and be used to create paint jobs over cast flexible polyurethane parts. Now, as usual, I'll put all of the product links in the video description, so be sure to check those out. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, click the little bell icon so you get notified when I post new content. And of course, thanks for watching.